So this is I'm quoting okay about three o'clock. Listen, this. Would you be surprised when you know the Bible? You have said Jesus, while on the cross, was calling Allah for his help in his native language. Again, Mark 15, the death of Jesus, Mark 15:34. Uh, it says the Passion Translation regardless of this. About three o'clock, Jesus shouted with a mighty, mighty voice in Aramaic, Eli, Eli, Lama Sabachani. That is, my God, my God, why have you turned your back on me? If Jesus is God, why would he call someone else my God? Why not me? Why not I? Why my God? Explain. The reason is because God, although Jesus was equal with God, the Bible says in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, all things were created through Him and by Him, and the Word became flesh, so Jesus became flesh, and the Bible says, like I mentioned earlier, although Jesus was equal with God, He did not use equality with God for something to be taken advantage of, but He humbled Himself, taking the form of a servant, and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. And the reason why He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, is it's because when Jesus hung on that cross, Jesus became sin for us. The Bible says that he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we could become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When was the Bible written? Who was the Bible written by? Jesus, Jesus never wrote the Bible. The Bible came into existence after how many years, peace of time? Who wrote the Bible? Explain it. The Bible is a compilation of many manuscripts within a span of 1,400 years. So if you're going to ask me who wrote the Bible, you've got to be more specific. Okay, I'll be more specific. Next question. How many versions of the Bible are there? A book that has been corrupted over time cannot be believed to absolutely anything, regardless of the facts. How do you say which is the actual Bible? We, we, I, just a minute, one more. We have the Quran which has been there for 1400 years, the same single book. Wait, 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 wait. Don't come from the back. Okay, here. Yes, go ahead. So, again, statement is statement is Quran has not been changed. This is religion to religion. Okay, okay. You know, you don't say words on the back. That's a lie, that's a lie. Okay, so, so look, to answer your first, he asked me a question. To answer your first question, how do we know that the Bible was not corrupted? Yeah, yeah, how do you know the Bible was not corrupted? All you have to go, go to is go to the earliest manuscripts. Which is the earliest manuscript? The Sinaiticus, the Vatican, and the Alexandrian. Those are the earliest manuscripts that we have today. They're written in the 300s, okay? And so, the, Jesus died in the, uh, 33 AD, 30 to 33 AD. So the earliest manuscripts, the Bible was written 60 AD, to set, the Gospels are written 60 to 90 AD. But the earliest manuscripts that we have today is the Vatican, the Vatican Alexandrian, and the Sinaiticus. And if you go to those scriptures, those are scriptures that Muhammad would have access to because Muhammad lived in the 600s, and he wait, wait, said you, that you, you are say, to read the Injil. You say, you say Muhammad can't read. He can't read. Exactly the point. So if he, if he had access, there is no point. No, because you're telling me that the Bible was corrupted, but even your no, prophet doesn't not, say that. I'm not telling you. You are I'm telling me. Telling me. You, yeah, you, you have, have to give me you. historical data to prove that the Bible See, has been corrupted. But you cannot, now, all you could do is make statements, but you cannot provide historical data. You all you have to do, all you have to do, yeah, that's because you didn't do your research. All you got to do is go back to the earliest manuscripts that we have access to today. And so, one God. There is right. One so you're God. just changing subjects because you no, don't know how to argue. No, I'm not arguing here. I'm and to God. and to and the Quran also. You came here with a certain set of information, set a date. We come back with hundreds of information, all with legit resources. You come here. Let, I'll tell you the answer. You come here. You blindside us because you know you're saying the same thing over and over again. But we just came here while we are passing by. The next time you come up, we can give you each and every answer and proof that there is one God. Is absolutely a Why does it have to be next time? Why can't you prove it right now? Because the only sources that you have is Islamic sources. You have to go back to historical data to make a, a valid point, a valid argument. Look, you, you, no, what, no. All of your sources you're getting from Islamic sources. But if you go back to historical data, the, Bible. Okay, so be ready for next time. No problem. Yeah, no problem. problem. We will be ready we'll next time. Number. I will take your number. We'll bring our team. We will have an actual debate. Okay, so come back when you're ready. No problem. I'll take your number. Give someone. No problem. Come back when you're ready. But I'm only here. Okay. Yeah, just because I, I need to go in a little bit. Right. Yeah, for, I would like to correct some, some, several of your lies, right? I don't remember all of them. But number one, uh, like you said, that the Bible can be shown to be true. Um, well, the Quran can. 
the Quran is preserved through two primary methods. Number one, the main one, the primary one, is the oral tradition, in which we have isnad, meaning a chain back to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and be upon him. Meaning this person can say, I learned from this person, who learned from this person, who learned from this person. And there aren't many different versions. There's one version. There are different qira'at, which is different, which is a different style of recitation. All of them, again, have isnads back to the Prophet ﷺ. Al-Matan. That's, that's one thing, and I need to go after it. I've been waiting a while. Uh, I've been waiting a while, you didn't let me respond. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, whereas on top of that, th th that's that's the primary one. On top of that, there's a bonus, which is in and of itself much better than the, anything you can show for the Bible. Which is the the written the mid written manuscripts that we have of the Quran, which are again even if you want to talk about these, they are just a bonus. Uh, uh, which are like for example, you can search up the Birmingham Quran, which is related to around the life of the Prophet or the life of his companions, uh, which is matches exactly what I can read as I memorize that part of the Quran and it's the same thing. Uh, on top of that, you have the vast majority of the Quran and other manuscripts. Everything is exactly the same thing. Anyway, that was what I was going to say. Whereas the Bible, you can't show any of that. The best you have is centuries afterwards, with like century gaps. Which is forget the Quran. Even a weak hadith, which is the same as in the, the way of the Prophet, the, the narrations about him. We would reject these as being a fabrication. Fabrication. Forget the Quran, which is the highest standard of, uh, of uh, hadith authenticity. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. In, in, in Hadith, is a science where each person is uh, studied, classified, and the chain is studied. Anyway, that's what I was going to say. I, and just so it's not cut and made seem like I'm running away. No, I waited a long time to respond, and I told you several times that I wanted that I was going to go. Do you, know that, do you know that the third caliphate burned all the other Quran translations? If you look at the Hadith and you read it? I was going to go with this, to be honest. I, I know it should be a friendly thing, right? But that's kind of bothering me, uh, this, this misrepresentation. The third uh, Khalifa, uh, meaning the third one after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Abu Bakr Ahmad Uthman. Uthman, who's the one you're referring to, which uh, the Quranic manuscripts that we have now, they're named after him, the, the Uthmani Quran, the Mushafani Uthmani Mushaf. Uh, he burnt, so the Quran was the same, and the Sahaba, who are the companions of the Prophet, they all agreed on the exact uh, Quran. But the order of the chapters, which is not like you know, a regular book where. And the number of chapters. Uh, the order and the number of chapters they did not agree upon. They, they disagreed on. There was a very minor disagreement, which is now which now with meaning consensus of the, the difference between chapter eight and chapter nine. Is it one? Is it one long thing, or is, or is there a difference? But everyone agreed on the exact verses, uh, and and now it's now, like I said, which is consensus, which Sunni Muslims consider binding anyway. Uh, that's that's number one. Uh, number two. So every all the verses are the same. They disagreed on the, uh, they had so when the Sahaba, the companions wrote their own Quran, and I'm, again I'm not an expert. I'm just telling you what I know, and you've come prepared, whereas I have not. Which, as uh, my brother here was, was saying, that set a date no, and no come debate, right? You're ready. You're, you should more, know more about the Quran than me. I'm here to defend the Bible and share the gospel. That's what I'm telling you. First of all, everything he said was not even from the Quran. We're showing you from your, which, by the way, I don't believe in the Bible anyway. I, I'm just telling you, proving that we're telling you from your own sources. That's that's one thing. Uh, so, and the, there's a cultural difference here that that burning the Quran. This is not a show of disrespect. In Islam, the way you get rid of, uh, the way you like, respectfully dispose of a Muslim, which is holy, is one of the ways you burn it, which is to show respect to so that it's not mistreated after all. Like, you know. So the Bible was not the same from the beginning. There was disagreements on chapters and order. Uh, early on, within the first, the four best teachers that Muhammad referred to in the Hadith, they disagreed. Some said that it was 111 chapters, others said there was 114 chapters, and that is why, that is not a lie, it's written in the Hadith. And that is why Uthman had to burn... And I have to finish responding. Again, I said I was going to go, but I wanted to... But you said this kind of miss... Uh, like this lie that you said kind of bothered me as I was going. So anyway, I'm going to respond to this and go. Uh, Inshallah. Uh, which is... Which is, um, like I said, there was a minor thing. Is it is chapter eight and nine? Are they? Uh, the argument was chapter one, thirteen, and fourteen because those chapters are prayers. And so the teachers thought that some of the teachers did not agree that those should be in the Quran because they are prayers. They are not oracles that came from Allah, and that was the argument. And that is why there was 
disputes among the Muslims, they would even kill each other in the beginning. And I don't care if you memorize them, that's not the argument. The argument is some were disagreeing whether the first chapter, the 13th, the 113 and 114 should be in the Quran, and Uthman had to collect. Uthman had to collect all of those manuscripts and burn them. Why would Uthman have to burn all those other manuscripts? Because they were different. Okay, so the Quran, so the Quran was not always the same. And like I said, you're not talking to a scholar. If you want to talk to a scholar, they don't believe you. Anyways, uh, so like I said, uh, just to repeat again, it was chapter eight and nine. Uh, sorry, yeah, chapter eight and nine, which is Surah uh, at Tawbah and Surah and uh, and uh, So yeah, uh, let me just gather my thoughts. Uh, uh, yeah, so that, that was the disagreement, and the difference was on the order of the chapters, and to, to make the Quran like one thing everyone agreed upon, to, to uh, make sure that the, what happened to the Bible, which again there was a uh, protection, a guarantee of protection in the Quran, inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. This is God saying that He will protect the Quran. That's number one. Uh, but, but, but anyway, in Islam, we believe you take the means. So in, in taking the means, they, they made everyone like they made it such that everyone agreed on one mushaf, which they then spread. Uh, there was no difference in the verses. The difference was the difference, like, the order of the chapters. And yeah, so what you said about eleven, this is a total lie. Like, I don't know where you got this. Chapter one is Surah Al Fatihah, which like every Muslim ever has memorized. Uh, chapter thirteen is Surah Al Rahd, which I've memorized, uh, and it's not a prayer. You said it's a lie. It's a lie. Uh, and chapter fourteen is Surah Ibrahim, the chapter of Abraham, and he's standing uh, upon him. And it's again not a prayer. There's a prayer in it, but it's, uh, it's not a prayer. And there's distinct like I, that you can't provide any evidence for what you said and like I said after I responded to that I'm going to know, so. so you have conceded at least that in the beginning the Quran was not the same it was different and that's why Uthman had to take all the other Qurans by force and burn them and so that whole argument that the Quran never changed, if you just go back to Islamic sources you can see for yourself that it is not true and so to end with my message my friends I was here to share the good news of Jesus Christ and the good news is very simple. Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus died for your sins and Jesus resurrected from the dead. And if you want to have forgiveness up for your sins my friends, you have got to come to him with a sincere heart, recognize that you have sinned against God, ask God to forgive you of your sins and make a decision today to turn away from your sins and follow Jesus Christ with all your heart. My friends, if you would like a free Bible, me and my friends, we have free Bibles. If you'd like for us to pray for you or if you have any questions, feel free to approach us. God bless you all. Jesus loves you. In Jesus' name, amen.